Grummers, Facebookers, Snappers, TikTokers, and Pincasters, what is happening? Yes, folks, welcome to another thrilling episode of the Pincast, when you learn to listen and listen to learn. Today's guest is no other than the powerhouse himself, Mark Weir. The majority of you know Mark is one of the brilliant men behind the highly successful R Kings competitions, Ireland and UK's leading luxury prize giveaways across Ireland and the UK. But that's not all. Mark doesn't just dabble at competitions. He's got an unreal collection of supercars that'll leave your jaw on the floor. His passion for the, these speed demons is truly something to behold. Mark's journey extends beyond the automotive scene. His business partnerships and collaborations are a testament to his entrepreneurial mindset. Whether it's strategizing in the boardroom or hitting the road in style, Mark Weir knows how to make an impact. So buckle up for the ride through the fast lanes of business, brilliance, supercar, and insights into a mind of a true entrepreneur. This is a pincast where we unravel inspiring stories and have a bit of crack along the way. Stay tuned and get ready for some serious inspiration with Mark Weir, Keeper LS. Abu. Yes, Mark. Thanks. Welcome to the Pincast. Thanks for having me. Good man. It's, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't think I would have got you on here. I think that's the first podcast at all. Uh, so that's, you know, it's an honour for me to have you on here and I really mean that. We've talked, we've, we've spoke off air here and, you know, we all, we all had it, everyone that's in here all had a crack it. normal. So, look, I want to start from the very start here. We're going to try and get these podcasts done within an hour, yeah. all right? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly mean it. I'm so grateful for you coming on. No, and, uh, thank you. And coming the whole way down to Arbo here. Uh, I'm going to feed after anyway. Yeah, I'm going to have a steak or something. We're going to head to Tilly Lamp next. So, look, I want to just start off the journey. Yeah. Where are you from? You know, your childhood, or what you did as a child, things, you know, um, that in, uh, would, would have inspired you as a young boy. Um, school, you know, all those bits and pieces that the young viewers are going to be yeah. watching in here to see. Look, I love, I love our kings. I love, you know, what, what, what the, what they've done, and I want to be. They, like, and I mean this here. There's, there's young people there, and even older people that yeah. you're inspiring. You mightn't even feel it because you are, you are quiet, like, you know. Um, I don't do too much on social you know. media. I don't put my face there. I try not to be the face, you yeah. know. Cause but you, but that's not me. I, I, but you're starting to. Yeah, starting I don't to, mind being on it. You know, I don't mind doing these wee things. But I'm not one for like stand. Oh, you can win this here and you do this and try to make it all about me. You yeah, know, that's yeah. not that's not me either. But you definitely you, like, and I'm a right bit older than you. You have inspired me, and I, I can truly say that. And likewise, I hope I've I've had some because I don't think you'd come down here no. to sit on here if you haven't a connection button. with me. You know, so from the start, give us Mark Weir, where you're from, and. Let's go right up to you left school. And so, so I'm from Bestbrook. And look at you, gonna look there, but look at you just. <laughs> right, so we're like childhood, like yes. own childhood, everything. Yes, right from you, from you can remember. From can remember. I can't really remember too much about childhood. Uh, primary school, dead on, just a wee shit in primary school. Yeah. High school, I was still a wee shit. And just in trouble all the time. Then probably. Once I left high school, I went on mechanican for six months. Yeah. Didn't like it. Then went to work for my dad, fitting kitchens. It was all right, like, but it was just me and my dad. So there was never much money, like, because it was just me and him doing it for a wage, you know? Good. But that was all right. Went on for a while. I'm still talking, I was going to go straight to Arkings, but I'm still going normal. Like, growing up, I was a. Uh, I was a. Uh, no, it's not even. I was going to go into detail all about being a band. But look, look, that's fine. Look, lad, that's fine. Yeah. That's just part of it. Like, like, that's how I was going to ask you there. You says there when you're school, you're a wee shit. Yeah. Right. You know, get get, get it here. There's people here that are watching this here that are yeah. fucking wee shits, you know, and they're doing things you shouldn't be doing. There was no worse con than me. All right. Look, it's my podcast. Best it's your podcast. Still a wee shit at heart anyway. Like, you know, but that's always going to be there. Yeah. But th this is part of, you know, lads that think. Right, I'm going to continue to be a fucking yeah. scum. But I don't mean I'm a wee as, really in, as in like going taking drugs. I was never into that there. I was never really into like fighting. I wasn't out fighting with people yeah. at all. It was more just, I love fires. Like no matter what, I'm an arsonist. I love fires. Yeah. And I still light fires all the time. But I just don't light stuff that's illegal anymore, yeah, you know. Yeah. 
But like growing up, what I went have a drink, then going home the end of the night, right? Let's, let's go and burn something. Let's go and rack something. It was always just yeah. vandalism. But that was the wee group we were in growing up, you know? What age were you and you doing this? Anywhere from 16 to... Just probably 21, 22 in right now. Yeah. And but this is where this is where the most damage can be done. Yeah. My damage was done between 16 and 21. Yeah. Where when I when I ended up in prison and things like that. So like, you know, the, the strength of this po- podcast here with you, like, and I didn't know any of this. It's, like, this is, it's starting to bring a part of me out as well. Yeah. We want to steer younger fellas away from there. Yeah. You know, don't do that. You know, don't get yourself stuck well, in there. We were just a bad me group, but that was just what we done every weekend. Like, yeah. It was once a summer, me and one of the boys drank every day after the full summer. It was great crack at the time, like, don't get me wrong, but now I wouldn't think of doing it. Yeah. Now I have a drink at the weekend, Friday, that's me. Yeah. Still love a drink, like a vodka and yeah. have a bit of crack while I'm one of them, not nasty and not yeah. any like that. I just have a laugh once I'm drinking. Yeah. So you, you still have the privilege to yeah. drink, which are, we're not, this isn't about, your podcast not about. We were drinking, but I I lost that privilege. Yeah. So like when I drink, it, it, it's it, I become a different person. I drink the next day, the next day. You still have that privilege. So like we're not on here saying the young boys don't drink. Yeah. But like in that sixteen to twenty one year old drinking spree, there was a lot of fucking shit happening oh, for you. Yeah, so, drinking done. You know, like you were doing. You maybe were doing things when there's alcohol in that you wouldn't do. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. now. So. You know, I don't want you to be embarrassed about that stage. Everybody well, gets bad. through that. You know? And it's good, like, you're being honest. I don't know whether I should have said it, you know. But it's better just to tell it all anyway. And but the good thing about it is there's young people on here that maybe are at that stage, yeah. you know, where you can you can reroute them. Yeah. Look, don't do not do that. You know, you're not... You You know, you did that there and you're lucky enough to be where you are now, who are kings, but you could have lost that. Yeah, oh, easy. You know? So people think, so, oh, well, Ryan Quinn done this here. I'm more weird on that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do it from I'm 16 to I'm 21. Yeah. But there's people that didn't get out, you know. But as well, if you didn't do that and say yeah. you had, had the knowledge you had now, you weren't sure that yeah. age, you'd be wet. Yes, yes, you yes, know. yes. Like if I had the knowledge I had, I have now when I was 21, and it was there because I see like Instagram and, and TikTok videos of like you know, your Tony Robbins, your Bob Proctors. Yeah. Way back when they were young men putting out the stuff that's out now that we actually do use, you know, in our everyday life. Maybe sometimes we don't know we're using it and it's actually boosted our businesses yeah. and lives to where it is today. So, like, that's that's the first thing whenever you said to me there when you were a wee shit. Yeah. It's the first thing bumping in my head, right? I'm not going to pass this, but I want to hear what you actually done yeah. when you were younger. What, you know, what, you know, crazy things you done as a kid. Anything else in there, you know, that you know, and and as a, as a as a kid, you you want to share out. That's what I mean. That that was my childhood. It was sort of just weekends with drinking with the boys, bit of ragging, have a laugh. And it was always good crack at the time, but there was never any thought of money wise. You know, money was like how to get through the weekend, mm-hmm. and that was it. It was never like I want to earn more until I got to the stage where early twenties, and then still working with my dad. And that's say like some weekends we didn't do a kitchen or whatever, and he's giving me. 150 quid you know yeah. and it's like I can't live in this here yeah. how, how am I going to get by with this here yeah. so then I started buying and selling vans I really enjoyed that there transits normally Yeah. and them rotten like you know what age are you now? I'm 34 so many years ago would that be what you started with 21 22 20, I started buying and selling vans I would say about 10 years ago I probably started buying and selling unreal so my uncle sold cars and would have bought a few trade-ins off him but you know, you're talking a couple of hundred pound. Oh. But then I got on to the transit. Really loved transit. But like at 22, 23 years of age, you were doing this. I like. Yeah. I didn't start being an entrepreneur, or whatever you call it, and tell us about one e nine. Yeah. Twenty eight. But I had to get the experience of prison to come out. But you're actually doing it long before I was even done. But I always in my head, I always thought, you know, because it says sell a van a week or whatever, and you're making two hundred fifty quid a van. To me, that there was like, oh, that's class. You know, big bonus every week. And who were you get? Who, where did you? Who did you get this inspiration from to start doing this? I'm trying to think. See, a few of the boys had sold cars and my uncle, my uncle was very successful selling cars and always liked the idea of taking something in, tidying it up and making a few quid, you know. Yeah. And that's sort of where it came from. We just enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And done that there for a good while. It was good out of crack. But I always remember thinking to myself, how can I get enough money to buy like a transit at five grand to sell on, you know. Yeah. That was always like the goal, right? How can I get the next one? I get the next one. I always envisioned in my head of having 
had like a big yard full of vans, you know, that was always my goal. Though. I really wanted to sell it. this come from absolutely no education? No education, no. In school I stayed, in school I was in class B, first to fifth year. Didn't change, but didn't study, didn't do nothing, like I don't know, just... But do you think if you'd have studied, you'd have... I don't think it would have made it different, to be honest with you. Would, would you think you would have, if you'd have been... Like I, I said this thing in the last podcast, is, uh, would we all, I said to the person, you know, how, how important educa- education... I think now if I would have settled myself, I could have got an education. Yeah. But I just couldn't. I just wanted to mess about. Yeah. Info. That's what I wanted to do. You know, girls, whatever there was happening. That's the way. And it, it distracted me from, you know, actually you do. There's, there's brain cells in there. So, to like, me, I, my opinion, obviously it'll be different from other people's opinions, but I don't think any more education would have made a difference. Mm-hmm. But that's maybe just because I got successful and learned through yeah. Different things just with business. Obviously, it'd be nice to have some sort of degree and know business side a bit more, but you're probably so you, you're better you, just learning you from the done, and You know, I'd need on the test first and then learn the lesson. Yeah. Instead of doing the lesson yeah. first. And then, That's it, lad. And then did the test. You better learn from your mistakes, really. So you better fail the test yeah. first and then, and then learn the lessons yeah, from going back on the game. So, the, the kitchen fit with your father, how, what kind of relationship had you there with your father? Working relationship? We normally killed each other half the time. Me and my dad. Great, like I take him away on all the car runs and all, yeah. you know, he, he takes a Ferrari, he calls it his car. If you ever see me post on Facebook, he'll comment on it, that's my car, stop posting this. You know, made him get on great, like, yeah. and very friendly work with my dad. Oh, it must have been over 10 years, yeah. I felt bad once I left him too, like, because I had to, you know, because our kings was getting so big. And is he still of a, is his he business? Still is the kitchen uh, What's he called, A&M Kitchens, because it was Alan Mark, yeah. you see. He's and there's an, a couple of boys working for him. You span soon as well. Give all them them places a good shit. Yeah, and as well. Well, it, it's uh, and he's he's doing well. He's doing well. Yeah, he's, he's loving it. Like. Oh, what, what has his business grown? His business has grown, but I always told him like I always give off them saying you need to put more profit in this. You know, like we shouldn't be working for a couple of hundred pound a week having your own business. Yeah, like I remember we're doing a kitchen one day, and Gary came home. We had just finished the job, and she goes, "Oh, that's lovely. I'm surprised." Well, you're surprised is because you were half the price of the next quote. Yeah. And I said, there you fucking go. You know, we could have had way more than this here. You know, we could have even an extra grand would have been an extra 500 each, you know. Yeah. And, but he's too soft. He's like, if he gets a wage, he's happy. Yeah. But like, he doesn't work off any advertising, no advertising whatsoever, just word of mouth because people know him. He's been at kitchens from he left school. Yeah. Same as, same as my father too. Like, we, you can see a lot of resemblances between us. Me and, I would have worked for that. He was doing mechanic and I mean one day, I was changing brake pads in a Vito van and, and I was taking the wheel nuts off and next thing you buy, she goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What I'd be like, I was like, with two feet, you know, feet under the wheel and you take yeah. them off. I had no jack on her. <laughs> I couldn't get the last nut out. <laughs> I said, I can't get this nut out. I had no jack on her. I was going, I didn't think like, no, 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 no legs. So like, I mean doing that, the mechanic and then going down to do the conversions and all. Like somebody said to me yesterday, he says, I can't, a friend of mine said to me, I can't believe that you've done the conversions and the bands and all. Well, like in the calibers. I all the, the, the they call it the uh, the conversions into like bu- uh, buses, taxis, oh, right, right, yeah. campers. Yeah. Uh, what do they call them? Or crew cabs and all. I used to we used to wear them. Used to come down through the the middle of the transits. It was the transits had to wear them down the middle yeah. of the floor? I used to put the screw in the floors and screw them. Oh, there was, there was I done a few crew <laughs> cabs one time. Selling transits. Literally three seats in the back. Boom, uh, thirty mil screws <laughs> down. <laughs> then they like fired back. Just straight into them. Well, I used to make no one was ever hurting one of them. Uh, uh, I had had anything, they were just phone. I like. used to uh, put it in the end, maybe putting screwing into the sides of the next thing, putting into the wire, maybe putting the t- screw in too long, next thing outside, and you could have hung your coat outside <laughs> the van because I had a screw stood through it right out to the panel. <laughs> but uh, no, we, I get, I get a, a, a familiar with you, you know, with the, the father son thing, and like we're all very, very close to that, you know. And, yeah. You know, as I said in the last po- last time, I saw, uh, the last podcast one, I see he put a silver spoon out to us. Yeah. Well, we had a stretch our necks. He'd off it in, drive down our throats, like, you know. And they was looked after as well, you know, whatever the cod, like. Yeah. We didn't grow up with any wealth or anything, mm-hmm. but we were still all right. You know, my dad had a good job with the big kitchen crowd he worked for. And my ma, where did she work? I think she worked in school for a good while. Yeah. You know, but like, we were just honest. Mm-hmm. We lived in the terrace house and everything mm-hmm. was just normal, you know. Yeah, but obviously they looked after us to give us pocket money and move three. So, right, we've got let's, you know, we're we're building up to where we want to get. Where we're going to, to the yeah. Extent, but 
So the the sale of the vans, right? So what, was that, that did you did you start? Was it vans, cars, or just were you mainly just, just vans? Right. So kept doing the vans for a good while, and then that was my first sort of side earner. Yeah. And then I done the bonus ball raffles, uh -huh. and that's where I met Paul. But how did this bonus ball? How did this come up? I've seen other people doing it. Right. And I thought I ain't gonna try that there. It used to be. What, the, well, what the, year was this? Oh, I don't know. Right. So our kings is going about five years. I would say it was two to three years before that. Right. We'd done the bonus balls for a good while, but I entered on everyone's other ones, you see. Yeah, right. So say you were doing one, I would have been in it. Uh -huh. So then that's why I said, I ain't going to start doing this here. Right. And I would have bought an odd car then to do, but normally it was a quick 1,000. Mm -hmm. So for anybody that doesn't know bonus balls, the way it works, 1 to 59, 20 quid a number, you can pick whatever price you want on it. Yeah. But 20 quid a number made me 180 quid, but it would be so loud and... 10 minutes, you know, yeah. you're going through trying to add all these people and everybody giving off, you know, I missed out the number that uh, You were doing this all week. I was like, that's great, doing this twice a week, there was uh, 360 quid a week, literally doing nothing, yeah, yeah. you know. And Paul, he was at it flat out, he entered all mine, I entered all his. So he was at it, was he, did he just start before you, or? I don't know, I think it took this, this the same is, time. Just to tell you, this is Paul Hardman. Um, actually, I, I'd be friendly at Paul as well. Um, I trained him and stuff like that, and I... Good, a real good laugh. Paul's a good laugh. I have a lot, a lot of time from. Yeah. So was he out of force, or did you start it? At I think the two of us were around the same time. That's how we knew each other. I think he actually won off me. I think he won a wee LT fifty off me, right. and that was the first time I met him, maybe. Um, but we just sort of been talking back and forward, you know, because we always answer each other's. Yeah. And we got friendly, and one day he set up a group called Raffle Kings, or no, no, what did he call it? He called it something weird, like a. Lucky, lucky stars, or no, no, lucky stars is one. Lucky, lucky clover, something like that. There, right? And he, he was with some English girl in it who done raffles, and he says to me, "Will I add all my raffle friends to it?" And I said, "No," because I was thinking of starting my own group. Yeah. He says, "Right, so we'll kick her out, and me and you did it. So we <laughs> kicked her out." And I said, "That name's a bit shit." The only way we call it raffle kings because just me and him done that there, set that up. Me and him done everything and it just the two of us raffling bonus ball, but you know, we kept our own profit like it wasn't yeah. like we shared it. And we done that there. What year is this? See, I'm not good with five years ago. So you said I would say this was twenty eighteen, was it? Yeah, seven or eight years ago it would have been. Oh, right. And we done that there for a good while, like built up a wee following on I think with maybe four or five thousand in it. Mm -hmm. And one day then I says to Paul, I'm gonna try and set this up as a business. Do you wanna go in with me? Yeah. And he said he had no dough. But I had I'd hit the credit union for a loan. I got a loan off them for 25 grand, told them I need a new van for work. <laughs> I got the 25 grand, thought this is great, you know, fleece them 25 grand. We still paid them back, obviously, but he says, I, I goes to Paul, I got 25 grand there, should I lend you? I said, yeah, yeah, no bother. So we started off, I think we gave, could have been 10 grand for the website or something. Maybe it wasn't even 25, because I'm trying to think what the R15 would have went. But I remember when we were, we started up anyway, it was quiet, you know, and to get the idea, that's where a lot of people who ask me where does our king come from yeah. it was raffle kings but raffles are legal you see right so that's why it just went to our king right. and then competitions obviously but uh, you know it was funny kicking her out of that group <laughs> I started that up with you we went away on anyway by ourselves set it up and I started off maybe that's where the rest of the money went I had bought a skyline for 8 grand uh -huh. and Paul had a 320D so I started with my scaling and he started his 320D. I think he kept that there though. The the scaling was the first competition and he done a few tune kits and stuff. But again, with it set up as a business all, everything was new to us. We didn't have a clue about anything. In the first year, everything was bought with cash yeah. until the accountant came to us once it was tax return and goes, what the fuck are you doing? This looks so much like money laundering, you know. Me and Paul thought we were great at the start. Once it got successful, like we were going to the bank and ordering bags of dough all the time. Yeah. You know, in the Monday, order for wild then once you left it on the way to the order more for Friday, us taking pictures of bags of cash, sending each other. No thought of going to get yeah. robbed here. You know how dodgy does this look and all. Uh, but that's part. That's part. That's part of business. Yeah, that's part didn't of have a clue. The bank actually shut on us after a year, and the, Nell, the Nell Smith, the accountant, he said that was the reason because we were just cash all the time. Yeah. So then we had to go and do everything transfer. Now people would ask us for cash, but no cash whatsoever. Yeah. But. At the start, me and him still split everything we done. So I done my car, I took the profits. He done his toolkit, he took the profits. Very hard to work out from, though, you know, once it started getting that wee bit more busy. It took a good while for it to build up. Like, I remember spending, like, £100 a Facebook ad yeah. and thinking, 
fucking spend 100 pound here. There's loads to be spent on this, you know. But then during COVID, we were spending fucking we we were spending a hundred grand a month on Facebook advertising, and it worked. I don't know because we we're just doing it because it was making so much as well. So we're throwing yeah. pumping it back in that, but I don't think we need it because during COVID is whenever the business probably boomed. Mm-hmm. You know, like overnight with COVID, it went through the roof. We went from maybe doing one two cars a week to three cars every day without fail, seven days a week, and the, at the time we still didn't really have business heads on us. But we, I used to do the draws whenever I worked with the eyes. See, I done them in the kitchen showroom. Yeah. And people coming in, you know, looking in the kitchen, the door something, trying to fucking lock the door and be quiet, ain't that a draw here? <laughs> Weirdly. Like, but the, the computer would only let us do 12 draws at a time. Yeah. Now we can do, like, if you want to do 100 draws, you could do it. Yeah. But if I hadn't knew that, we would have been doing that much. Mm-hmm. And if we done all the draws, like me and Paul done the first one together, and then he done the odd one, and he didn't really like it, I didn't like it either, like. Yeah. But it just got normal then. And 12 draws, so I think we had four cars and then the rest bundles and holidays and stuff like that. But we could have been doing twice as much if I had a thought. Yeah. You know, right, let's get a different computer here. It was good now, as uh, COVID through the roof, because everybody was getting paid to sit in the house. Yeah. And cousin, cousin, there was no sports on, no nothing. You know, to spend money. You know to spend money, yeah. Yeah. We just went through the roof and took off crazy. Like, it's not where it was during COVID, but we knew that was never maintainable. Yeah. You know, by his cork was very successful. The cork winner every day without fail of a car. Either uh, you were getting loads of loads of people entered from yeah. there. Because once you, that that's the way it always worked. Like so, if you say you want a car off us, you're going to tell all your friends and guarantee half of them there is going to go and spend money on it because they're like, "Oh look, he won. This is real." Like at the start, that was a struggle trying to get people to trust it. Yeah. Only we had the wee raffle kings group that we had all the normal people who entered the bonus balls with us. Yeah. That then they trusted us and then you get a few winners and they tell people, you know, it just went that way. But even to this day, you still get people saying silly shit like, yeah. you know, oh, that's a scam. No one ever wins. Always a, a family member wins and all. Family members aren't allowed to enter for a start. Yeah. But. So, what, like you've changed a lot of lives. Oh, I doubt it. These, these raffles. Like, is there anything that stands out in mind for you? And he's picking a person. No, I did laugh because at the start, you know, like say we done our first hundred grand, and we thought this is massive here. Rang up the boy, well, congratulations, you won a hundred grand. He goes, all right, can you ring me back later? I'm in work here. And uh, what the fuck? Like, you know, you just won a hundred grand. You know, where's the excitement there? Yeah. But a lot of the people are in shock because they get back to us and go, sorry, I was in shock there. I can't believe it. Why, why, just to say, my dad won a, an Evo 6, Tommy Mac, three that weeks there. ago. And the blade rings him and... He, he sits up in the house and he answers the phone and like I call him the producer the producer he does, he knows my dad you know you might meet him the day if he's about I know you're and not, anyway. he, uh, he says hello and he says you want to tell me Mac and Evo what feels is us to get down there she's that right easy we knew what it was we well, thought of somebody messing about he yeah. says tell you what ring me back tomorrow he says sir so you're on the next day again and he starts saying Kevin are you boys messing me about here he says there's somebody ringing me here saying I run a Tommy Mac and Evo it, and he did enter like and it was true like he, like he, people as you say just don't yeah. they think, the only way we'd get fuck off and hang up uh, and that's all you get and then they block your number uh-huh. and then you're emailing them and all like, but you'd keep at them you, you uh, not, never had no one not get a prize uh, so you'd you'd, you'd just yeah. wouldn't say like you have well, to like sure. but you wouldn't just go oh fuck you you, you ring no no, 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 no you should no keep, keep going till you get them uh. no that's good you, you, know, you can understand too that uh, people in America think somebody's hooked calling you know yeah We've talked about the journey more, all right? Yeah. There's just uh, people that the questions people have asked that I would have a lot of, lot of, uh, I suppose, um, I have a lot of faith in yeah. that I want to say, like, I'm bringing Mark on here. I don't tell that many people who's coming on, but these people say, what questions would you, would you have for this man? You know, we had Rory on the last time, and I know Rory for many, many years, so it was easy for me to ask him questions. Yeah, because you know, like, yourself, like, yeah. and, you know, I don't use through social media and, and stuff like that to our cabin and all, but I want get other people to get something yeah, from you. Yeah. Because I'm honestly here, I'm kind of sitting here going, you know, yeah, actually, I don't my vein here, you know, of stuff that's coming out here. Yeah. And it's actually making me anxious because I ain't going like, what more do I ask this man here? Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is, this is, you know, but like, what, you know, we've been through, we've, we've basically went through, um, you know, the journey, yeah. how it began, you know, you know, how did the idea come about? It was you and, your, you and Paul yeah. um, together through the bonus ball. Um, business strategies. 
you know. Um, what 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 key strategies have you found most effective in growing our kings um, and maintaining the success of the the company? You're still running it. Yeah, see, still, the, still, the thing still, well, the good thing with it is that with people winning, it's always going to keep going. You know, like we never come up with anything right let's do this let's do this you know yes we'll spend on Facebook advertising but we'll try and cut that way down now because it's useless we have a new boy employed there a uh, photographer videographer he's doing some class videos for us yeah. okay, he was down the ad day actually and took one of the cars out drifting out around the road down there now uh huh you know your brother was he He was drifting was he yeah he would never tell you he tell either he was down in the car was sitting there and we were going to take it out for videos but I wouldn't I couldn't drive like I'd drive in a straight lane uh. and he says will you take us out so we can video it he was, yeah, yeah, no bother. No what bother. other one is he doing? Uh, it's a BM E92 320D with an RB25. Things mental, it's sequential and all in it. You see it? Oh, like, well. Oh, I, yeah. Right, Tolly Room now a few times. Great crack. I made a few mistakes awesome for left of the shop. He said to me one day, he was up here the day, he says, I'll maybe take a rally car out in it. <laughs> I don't know about that there. He's down there, but he, he, he like, he, I seen me, time I was taking a drop of drink and I was living there, actually. And that's where he's living now. And I used to see him. I could hear the car start. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to get away for a drink. And I goes, must get a lift. When I tell you, I was nearly pulling the door, pulling off the car. Like, on, he can drive. Like, oh, he's on the door. Yeah. And I actually yeah. get a lift to the, to, the, to the bar over the road. I said, stop there. I have to get a birthday card. So he stopped the shop. I had no birthday card to get. First shy is in. I says, here, see you later. I walked on. <laughs> on. Believable. Class. Like, like, I took a wee bit of gratitude for him because I mean he's only a cub he's only eight and I used to drive down to the Loch Shore Diff and all I don't know if you mind it well, Diff here and then we had the Iron Diff and all and I had been into the cars and stuff but I just lost it when I came out of prison I just lost my, my, my appetite for it but he was eight or nine years of age please let me drive please let me drive I says you're not driving you don't have out of the drive and then we had to let him out in the quad yeah. everybody just come to watch him like this wee boy on the quad and him going like this here and all and dealings Brilliant, like him laying in the front of her, we were spinning. Lovely. So I come down the road one day from there and Duffy says to me, please let me drive. I says, right, no problem. So I puts him into the, it was, um, it was one of those coupes, the, the BMW, the 325i. So yeah, the 325i, yeah. And she was all stickered and all. We got him in. I took him to the airdrome. I says, right, same as the quad, let it off, let, let the brake off, cut and bang in the feet and just lock her. He get in there. He locked her that road. Next thing he swung her the other road. <laughs> and the other right says, stop, stop, stop. No, no one. And then after that day, he just kept getting better and better and better. And I do think, like, he, he's a brilliant driver. Like, you see Dwayne McKeever as well. Like, yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, it's class. Yeah, boy, they're, 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 they're. But, like, were we off the, the, the track there? So, where are we at there? Just, I, so, do you ever get, like, uh, and we all, as, as businessmen, get this, when's it ever going to stop? Uh, when we're going to get um, is this like is this going to die someday or I do yeah I'll be thinking what kind of chase for the next thing yeah and the head on me now you know to want to just keep growing and growing but it more comes from I look at other people then yeah you know who's a lot more successful yes and not that it'd be like I want to be like them but it'd be like I want to be that level and keep going and going and going and have you other any other things what are, have you any other businesses that have going a furniture business yeah my ma actually works on it now what's it called uh, Richbrook Furniture. Yeah. Near the whole family employed la. <laughs> good, that's good. Two brothers. Well, I suppose I only have two brothers and then my dad, he never wanted to come because whenever I had to leave him, I only left him about three years ago. I think it was two years after our king started. Yeah. And it was getting too busy. Like I was sitting, you know, trying to do raffles and trying to concentrate and stuff while I'm sitting making a kitchen. Yeah. And he would be giving off to me, you know, fucking do that there outside here working hours. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> headphones in all the time and I don't know, I says to him then, Look, this is going good here, I'll take you on. And he says, no, he says, I need to be working. Yeah. He says, you just take me on and give me ways for doing nothing. Like. Yeah. He needs to keep the head. But uh, that, that'd be like me saying to the big man over there, man, you work for me. But, oh, no, you can't. No, no, no. no. Um, I made him selling his first business uh, in 98. I mean, bringing us all into Talis. I thought there's something wrong. You're sick. I told us, look, I'm, I've sold the business and X amount of pounds and all. So I work for the next 10 years. He lasted, I think he lost t- 10 months. Retired for 10 months. Yeah. Only 38. That's back to his wife. He's 64, so he's 5 now. He's you need to be keeping the head busy. Multiple businesses going. I actually had a, I have a friend as well, the same as his, his father. I think his father came into the business with him as well. And now it's, it's kind of, you know, he kind of overtook him. Yeah. Can't do that. 
Yeah. You never take over overtake your dad. Like, you know? no. He's no matter what you do, he's, <laughs> he's he's the boss, like you know. And you always have to have that. I always, yeah. no matter where I go in the next five, ten years time, like, he was my idol, like you know. And, and what he done, where I am today is. I would listen to him. I used to listen to him saying, fuck that man shot his mouth. But oh, my dad told me at the start, he says, I was stupid, that's never going to work. Yeah. It's never going to work at all. And then he says, wait, where's I? had a fucking one, didn't we? <laughs> Everybody says to me all the time, I say this all the time, he says, no money, I lift watts. Yeah. Instead of calling the weights, he called the watts. <laughs> I've said that sometimes. But like, no, you always, so you have other, you have other, you have other. You have I've got there, I bought a big commercial yard, like an industrial yard, and they get the, obviously the rent from that there. I just, uh, I don't know what to do next though. Yeah. You know, I'll still obviously keep going working and keep growing it and all, but I still want, you know, as I say, have your hand money pays or yeah. finger money pays, whatever the saying is, you know. I want, it's good to have them all complimenting each other. Yeah, I want more and more. I've actually, no, I'll not even say what I'm looking into at the minute because they'll give it away before it's yeah. started, you know. Yeah. But I was doing something at the minute sort of fitness ways. Yeah. Not gyms or anything like that. A product, but we'll yeah. see how it works. Well, the testing see. stages now. Good, good. But I want to, maybe more property as well, but I just don't know. I, I'm i more the thought process of quick investment. Quick, I, I can't think of a long term. The account tells me all the time, pension, pension, pension. Yeah. Everybody tells me that, financial advisor, everyone. I just can't think that far ahead. Yeah. I don't want to think 20 years down. I want to think, I want to think two years down maybe even. And that, that's where we're in the here now. Just, just from, this is the next question. Mindset for success. Yeah, that's exactly what you're talking just about want it now. Quick, yeah. So I, I say like I even say this recently to people. I see them all January, January, January. I say stop thinking it's January. Yeah, today's Sunday, twenty four hours. And I used to think I listened to all this mindset stuff. I got myself a mentor, nearly four months ago. Yeah, and I this mentor and stuff. I used to think, oh fuck, here's no one come. Here's yeah, five grand. No, it's tight. What's that? Oh fuck, well, this I fell harder school than this person, but this this person just come out of the blue to me um, they're an American and the producers I call him. Yeah, he's in with them now too the difference I've, I used to call him the producer <laughs> where's Wally Yeah, because he couldn't find him <laughs> it just disappeared On the, see like all this setup here is all down to him yeah. and he just disappeared and I says like how am I this mother staying them up and I just handed the mentor over to him yeah. See the difference I seen this man the last month? Unbelievable. So I as I say I got myself a mentor. I didn't mean that. Big benefit off. you think, yeah. Oh man, unbelievable. I didn't give a myself. Unbelievable. He's a young like, you know? Yeah. And I didn't believe in it because other people had uh, you think if they're just out there to fleece you and fucking on, on, tell you a few things you already know. Enjoy. He said to me he could see what was in me. Yeah. But he knew the way I was coming across wasn't me. Yeah. So he just, he, I bumped into him and, and how I bumped into him, I gave him something for nothing by bumping into him. I know, I met him when I was 10. He was here for a year and he moved back to the States so he spent a year here because the troubles were too heavy. Yeah. And they went back and I never seen him to one day I was at the shop and he, uh, he snapped my window and I looked and I goes, well, how you doing? He goes, what's happening, man? I goes, see the fuck this? And the clue. They said his name. And then I could see the I could see the features from yeah. He goes, "What's the crack?" He's just standing there, and he's going like, hey, "That's what." I'm. The next thing he says, "Oh, my boy wants to go to the gym." He says, "Can I use the gym?" I said, "No problem." What are we? I says, "No." He says, "I remember in the states he can look after me." Yeah, hey, they're wrong. Never thought of him after. Then next thing he started sending me stuff over the course of about a month, month and a half. It was fuck sick and all these clients. Yeah, I mean that's like looking my money here sort of thing. No, I wasn't even looking. Well, it was just saying things to me. I was, was, and the more it went on. The more and all, the more started to just go on like, fuck, there's something happening here. So I started doing the things he's telling me to do. Yeah. Things just start happening, happening, happening. And next thing I know, nothing to, like, I'm sitting here today with you doing this. Yeah. All this thing won't, won't be possible, right? Because he, he's still this to me. And like, something happened there a couple of weeks ago. And me and, we call him Mark. So we should call him, we call him Mark. Me and I was sitting there at a, at, and we're having a business meeting. And he told me to go. He told me to go to a place. I, I just, I just kind of wanted to stay out of it. But I went. And this thing happened. And I looked at him and I says, right, I'm going to get on to the mentor here. I sent him a voice note. Then, what, minute, come back to me. 
And he walked it out for me. Like, unbelievable. And that's two weeks ago. And there's all the things that have happened since. Every time I send him a message of what's happening, he puts it into, it's like get into, into the dictionary. I'm saying, what's the meaning of this here? Yeah. It's there. And the parent, I'll give you, I'll give you his, his contact. I'll give you three right. people. And I give it a, a, a girl there recently. Um, very successful person. Very, very wealthy person. But even they get up all the money in the world, see if it's not up here, it's not right. Uh, okay. they good and they co- I see the difference in them in the last 10 days. Yeah. Unbelievable. And they were so afraid to talk to him. He's fucking brilliant. I wouldn't be afraid to talk. See last, see last day, there's something last night happened, right? Yeah. And I sent him a message. And he says, you're a passing stranger. But I'll tell you that off, off air, but he, I couldn't have worked it out. Not yeah. a chance. Not for the love of me. But like, as I say, mindset, let's get back to, um, like, have you felt your mindset has changed? In certain ways, I feel like I'm always like the amount of people that will always say to me, all of it's all they're just the same. You know, you never ever changed. Yeah. Yes, I get fancy cars and stuff, but never changes me. Just being the same normal person, whether I'm out the drink or whether I'm just normal in the street, you know, they said you're just the exact same. Normally, you're floating about North Face tracksuit, you can fucking have the crack and, you know, it didn't go up my own arse or anything. Yeah. You know, thinking now I'm better than anybody. If anything has made me near go the opposite way. Yeah. And think that, you know, no one's better than each other. Yeah. And yeah. you, know, you prefer to help someone rather than trying to bypass them, you know. But like just just when I touch on the mindset thing, there, the first thing come back, which I love there, he says, I would actually talk to that person. Oh yeah. No so problem. you wanna you you still wanna, I wanna, wanna improve. You wanna sharpen it. Yeah. Right, we'll go. I think did you get married? Did you get married, yeah, twelve weeks ago on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what made it was that a, a was a quiet one. Yeah. Me hearing a child, that was it. Boom. Didn't tell parents, didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I'm not, again, as you say, the way I say, I'm not in front of the camera, and I'm not one for standing in front of a big crowd. No, you know, I wanted to be. She was the same thought process as me, like you know, have it normal, just us, intimate, rather than thinking, "Fuck, there's someone down there looking at me. Am I gonna fucking cry here? Am I gonna go red? Am I gonna be embarrassed here?" You know. Yeah, and you have a the, kid. You have a kid. Yeah, it's a boy, thing we've done. We girl. So you usually yeah, a very yeah. long time. Yeah, so we're together. I'll say it wrong she'll give off to me anyway like, but I would say 13 years yeah that's good that's good and she she was a good driving force behind me as well to be fair yeah because before that I was in a rut before I met her I knew her all my life like, but we never got together or done anything like. and then one day I just we're like fuck this here shit you know and just started talking a bit more and then just got together and yeah that was it and she's in the business too no she's not she's independent she won't do I do her own thing? Yeah. You know, offered her job multiple times. No. Yeah. Says, you would have me doing that. I need to be out working. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. Right. She, she's probably the main thing that keeps me grounded in normal words. If if it didn't require to keep me normal, like I'd probably be fucking go off the rails maybe. I don't know. Yeah. When I, I don't think I would go off the rails, but I'd just go a bit madder, you know? Mm. No, I, I, I think I had that conversation with a fella the other day. And I said, if you didn't have her, you'd be... Like he, he, when he, he takes a drink, he goes still mad. Yeah. He hardly ever drinks. And the reason he hardly ever drinks because he's got to work. Yeah. And I says, like, you know, you're only, take her away. And you're, your next, your adventure will be to lie on the street. Yeah. Because you, so you does, it takes a good woman. Oh, definitely does, yeah. But you need everything, you need the whole family around you. You need yeah. your own family, their family. Everybody needs to be. Yeah. And it really, really helps, you know. So, entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial insights. As a successful entrepreneur, this is a question I've got. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone starting out in business? Take a chance. Don't be scared to take a chance. Worst, worst that can happen is it doesn't work out and then you just go again. Yeah. Now, if I didn't take that loan off credit union, then probably, well, I'd maybe have a fan yard or something, but, but you took, <laughs> I wouldn't be as successful as I was. People you know? get loans and uh, go partying, holidaying. Well, they got the a thing. I had an awful credit history. Yeah. Because once I was young as well, like I remember going to Planet Love, got a credit card with five hundred pound on straight to the bank machine. Took out five hundred quid, broke the car and up to another way. Mm-hmm. That was it. Never paid it back. Like an awful credit. Got a loan for a car, bore at one stage, and it was, I think it was four grand or something at the time. Made one pound on it, didn't pay it back. It was a dick that way. You know, that was I think that was the two things that just ruined my credit. Yeah. And so I had to build it up, you know, saving in the credit union, and that's how they were able to give me the loan then. Yeah. Because I knew in my head I wanted to get a loan for something. If it wasn't, if it wasn't at that stage, whenever I started thinking about doing our kings as a business, I probably would have used it to go and buy vans, you know, and yeah. turn that into more. 
But so like you see, if people say, oh, don't borrow, don't borrow. You have to borrow, babe. Well, that's it. I'm actually thinking at the minute with the yard that I own of taking out a loan against it. Yeah. And just because I'm thinking of ways to grow it without having to really do anything. If I take out a loan against it, but I told me I can get like houses, say, uh, 10 by the nets. Yeah. Then them by the nets should cover the repayment of the loan and the repayments of the house. Yeah. And then in, if you use money that's not yours, yeah. and in 10 years' time, the loan's repaid, and in probably 25 years' time, then you have 10 houses there. Yes. Yeah. You have used no money in like yeah. no investment in. Yeah. That's what everybody's doing. Like, you know, but don't be afraid. If, if someone said this to me like, two years ago, I'm like, really, no. So be an advocate. Don't be afraid to borrow, beg, and have a set of balls. Yeah. You know, I think I done the borrow and, and a set of balls, but I never begged. Yeah. And I did beg one time there, and I got what I wanted. So, like, that's a bit of advice I got. So, your supercar passion, your collection of supercars is nothing short of spectacular. Tell us a bit about I love my cars. Uh, so this is two things, two, two things that I like. I like cars and watches. Yeah. And sometimes I get sick of both of them. And then, you know, be like, I got into watches first, actually, and bought all the teak and they just drop like fucking, it's sort of second me with watches. Mm-hmm. But I do like a watch, but then I'll be scared of wear too, you know, in case it, the racket, like, because I'm a mess, like, mm-hmm. once for hitting off things and all. I remember putting on a good watch one day, I'd bought a good one, and we were for going out that night. Walked from the bedroom to the bathroom and smashed it off the door handle. Like, nope, I'm not wearing that out tonight. And just too not clumsy. I don't know, I just don't care to think of it, you know. You smash it off something. Wore a good one today, like, for that's just. I just said, oh, watch this. A bit of mine there would be friendly with Conor McGregor. And he's telling me, you know, do you know what happened to me? And I says, what? Well, he says, like, I've seen me in parties with him. He's running around on watch home with a few million. And he says, there's people pulling at him. And I see him when you stop it. Yeah. Next thing you pull his watch. Next thing is he just dicks him. <laughs> What do you want to? I know, because you're sitting there like, watching you a few million pounds on man's pulling yeah. his arm. He says, what happens? He starts pulling the next thing and pull his watch. He has a reaction to hit them a dig. But he think, you know, that's, that's, that's correct. Like, yeah. you know, you're walking out with your watches and you can smack them off. Uh, smack them off. Lay them behind you. Then you yep. think, is it safer to invest in watches than it is to invest in cars? Because it's obviously, a, you know, cars need a unit and insured and heated and all this. What's yet. this watch here you want? It's a Royal Oak. Yeah, P. Right, right. He's a good one. I don't want to watch it, so I wouldn't know, but... I actually got that there and didn't like it and I was like because here's too big on my wrist no no it's not and then went to sell it and then it sat for like two weeks and it, oh, fuck I'm going to take it back and just wear it so many cars have you got I've cut down a right bit I think I've maybe like 15 or something at the moment what's your favourite one SVJ Lamborghini that's the by a mile Rarity one you did yeah. yeah love it it was the first big big car I got like it's been the dearest car that I have mm-hmm. at the start it did have an Aventador no I actually bought back a uh, was it Harkin or Glardo? Glardo off a winner. Bought it back, then changed to Harkin. They had a Ventador. And then went to the Ventador SVJ. And I can't really top it. If I top that, I have to get a Bugatti or something. Is there a, new, is there a car out there you can't get your hands on? That you would want? I'd love a Bugatti. Right. But is it like an old time car, or a car out there you just can't get your hands on? Not really. It's mm. sort of like a 22B. I've seen one. Chubby Chubby's Port. one, yeah. Oh, he is one up there. So it's advertised Chubby as well as 300. And right, I... Roll under tech question. I mark. seen that. <laughs> I was going to write blow it if I give you a pound a day for three yeah. hundred something thousand days. Would you take it? Then I said, no. I I'd be. like one of them, but I don't think they're. I don't know how safe of an investment they are, and mm-hmm. I've sort of gone away from. I'm not going away from the cars. I still love my cars. I keep my uh, the SVJ, the twin turbo Huracan, Performante, an F twelve Berlinetta. I love it. That's the three super cars. Mm-hmm. I keep them. Then I've got rid of an ad, good few bits, but I have my GTRs, R34 GTRs. I like all that old Jap stuff. Yeah. And then a mirror, so it's a good daily. And I don't think I'll invest in cars anymore unless I know that it's a rare car that's going to go up in nice. value. Because yeah, yeah. I was thinking to go and put, whether it's 100,000 or 50,000 or 200,000 in a car, it's not making me anything. Yeah. So I had the thought process now where to use money to make more. Yeah. Yeah. Took a long time to get thinking like that, where before I just think oh I want that there I'm going to get that there that's when I, I'm working towards getting this next thing and then once I get it it's like this isn't giving me what I thought it would you know are there many watches? I don't have a lot of watches at the minute maybe like seven seven or eight don't have a lot of cars at 15 and don't have a lot of watches seven <laughs> but I always did more you see that's the thing what are you, what are you, what are you risking you got? <laughs> I'm cutting down now you see 
Det er slet ikke nok. Nej, jeg er ikke min næste med hvad der mig er. Hvad er boxet? Hvad er det? Hvad er det? You know, Ray, we'll go down to another couple of questions, and we're going to try and read this up as quick as possible. Um, collaborations and partnerships. We've seen the uh, somebody's on here. They've seen you share stuff on even a, a, a food review. A food review, so not there or not. But I'm really. What What's the story there with that? Um, that's good. I'll crack. I'll tell you how that came about. My brother messaged him, like, oh, whenever Matt was only starting out. And he never got a reply back. And then Stephen said to me there, I'd say we're with Matt near a year now. He said to me, he, whenever we started with him, he goes, uh, this food review, but you know, I think he'd be great to get on board, link up with and all. I said, like, who is he? I don't know, you know, because I don't watch much videos or anything like that. Um, he says, oh, he knows all his videos, follows him and all. So he got in touch with him in then. And that's when we all got the talks and sponsored him for the year. But he comes over to us once a year and we go around places with him doing videos and stuff. He's great out crack like. So you're kind of a sponsor for him, right? Yeah. We just go around and his leftovers. And, yeah. I see you. What about the... If you, you're you big into the cage fighting, aren't you? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Sponsor three three cage fighting events and probably ten cage fighters. Did I hear you're after Lockhart for sponsorship? No? Was that three? I said it last and he didn't get back to me. Great. Kill. There you are. Kill, a good <laughs> friend of mine. I just said, well, he's fighting now. See, it would have went into his message request, you see. But if he'd have seen it, he's, 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 a, he's a very good down to earth. There's a few ones I tried to get as well. A few arseholes as well, sponsored before and fucked me over. Yeah. And not them mm. names, because I'll... No, no, I don't, I don't want, uh, I don't want choked out down the street someday. Um, right, so there's right, we're not two questions here, and they're two very important ones. Life, you know, work life and balance. Is there a such thing as balance? I don't, to be honest with you. Not really, no. As you said earlier on there, you have a good woman in your corner. Yeah. See how long you have that, that's balance. But you can get too obsessed with work. Yeah. Like I could be sitting on my phone there all evening, all evening. And yeah, no, that, I, I know to... I should be fucking listening a bit more once I'm being spoke to. And, yeah, yeah. But sometimes maybe someone commented something that's stupid, you know, mm. oh, you put in the wrong number there for the draws or something. And to me, that just overtakes me to correct us here, even though I'm in the mid-conversation. You get much troll. Not really. Dead at the start. Not really now. Can you ignore it? No. No, you couldn't ignore it? No. I can. No. So, well, this past while I'd just block if anybody's there, but oh. it depends if it's a Friday and I've had a few drinks. I mean, it's a different story. I, like I just bang ring them. I, I, I leave it to, I give it 24 hours and just kiss the drink and then I ring them. I like, I, I like to do a bit of slagging back. No, I, I used to do it, but it, 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 that takes up your time. Like. Yeah. That's just that's why I've come into this because I could be sitting there with somebody the next thing I'm on there. So I just ring them. Yeah. I, I, I rang someone yesterday morning and uh, oh, they, just, they were implied I was lethal. Sorry, I can't take a piece a piece time God at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> they basically said I was God. They said, I know it's great, but I can't take it. And then they said, call me Gandhi or something like that. At least, I at least he was consistent. But it was they didn't, funny, they didn't back away so after, you know. But then there was somebody else that before wrote something to me and I rang him and I got his mobile number but he didn't answer me back. <laughs> but I was ringing it up. I was ringing it up. Are you okay? Yeah. Do you need to do it? What's the story? Why do you feel the need to do that? Yeah, I need help or something. Yeah. Like, you know, that's all I used to. Like, I should look at you. Know. And I said to the boy yesterday, he says, a small man, uh, a small man is sore on other people. And a, and a, and a, and a great man is, is sore on himself. Yeah. And I says, I used to be very sore on other people. It was I was a very small man, but I says, I've changed that. But, so like, yeah, I, I get it. That would be the massive thing of balance is being on your phone it's and if someone's there. saying something bad about the business you see it's alright if someone's maybe just doing a bit of slag and that car looks like shit or something you know and just be like oh, let that go and hide that comment or delete it or just let it be there because most of the time because we have such a good following yeah. you don't really need to respond you just get people jumping on it and if it's not true I, that, that, I let it lie anything no I've stopped trying to let it lie there I let it lie there you know what I mean like someone said to me in my TikTok there you're you're not a you you how you're not an alcoholic, and I says I thought that myself and went out and tried to drink again. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it didn't didn't work. And well, how can you answer that? I just answer the back. But I just leave the things out. I just find if it's a hundred percent not true, way you react. Yeah, you know, I just so and that's all they're doing for is a reaction anyway. Yeah, so I just I love it. Last question here, um, and then I'll ask you, uh, just just from people that I, yeah. I want is uh, lessons learned. You know, throughout your journey, what have been some of the valuable lessons you've learnt about life and business? Oh, no. 
It's a tough one now to think off the top of the head. Don't panic, you know. Just lessons learnt. You're still young, like you have a lot more to learn. You know, but like you're you're definitely a I'm, I'm probably too trusting to know that. Trust too many people, which but I, I wouldn't say a lesson learned is not to trust as many people because I've never really been fucked over, you know. I sort of need to just hurt more. Maybe with people close to you. Not even no, everybody's been dead on around me. You know, I haven't had no badness that way. I just I'm trying to just think of even examples, just you know, people trying to fuck you with all of If I think of a few quid you you know, they'll try and get it off you really. I suppose just think a bit more before you do the things, you know, before you jump into something. It was too good to be through it normally is. But the lesson learned with that would be going back to one of the eye questions is to take a chance on things. Because you don't take a chance, you don't know. I guess I was saying, thinking of doing other things and in the process of doing other things, I need to take my own advice too and say, fucking take that chance. Yeah. But then it's very easy to get, you know, sometimes the things are too good to be true and you're like, you need to just sit back and ask someone else, say to someone else, what do you think of this here that I'm thinking of doing? What do you think of this here that I'm, you know, going to be a part of or something? And then they'll give you a bit of advice. Would you still fall back on the old fella? To ask him questions or do you? No. No, you don't. He, he, my dad's too, like even if I, I go, I'd go down to him, the house the odd time and he'll say, but can you do this song? I'd be like, oh, I bought an Akiar there. Stupid, don't do that there and all, but can you afford to do this and all? I just said, I'm stop it all. And he was, oh, right, whatever, whatever. He's, he's like, I don't want you to waste your money. I don't want you to do this, do that. He's, he's, he's looking out for me too much, you know. And then he'll go, I suppose you know best. Well, you're a county down, man. And there's plenty of big names around county down. We have Andy Malone, Ampax. We have uh, McAreevy. What's his T- first Tony name? McAreevy. Tony McAreevy, is that his name? And then we have Sean Casey. He's coming up. I don't know the Sean Casey. I know Andy. Andy used to have the unit under us where our Kings is now. That's how I got to know him. But it was the unit... Bes- Two units beside where I'd on the kitchens in, you see. That's where I got to know Andy. A lot of people don't like him because he's very vocal and all this here. I think he's 100%. He is what I, it is. I actually, I, what, what, what you see with him is what you get. He doesn't put on a show. And he's one of these boys that would help you out if you want to. Like, if I thought I wanted to ask him something, I know he'd be honest with me. You know, and he's dead on. Like he, to me, I think he's 100%. People don't like him because, you know, people don't like people if they're just louder than them that's like ah oh, fuck that or person or everybody now. else is, is, has, yeah. a, has a bandwagon them all on I he actually blocked me off social media and then but I've never had a run into him and then I seen him doing the troll busters but I wanted to get on his radar because he was getting the the, 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 the traffic so I called him about one night full I was actually in there uh, for a box a charity boxing match but he was smart enough not to bait on it because if he had a, if he had a bit on it then I had to get onto his platform and then next thing people go, oh, I'd be buy meals off him. But then there's Tony Megalevy. He's down that direction. I know, to- I know of Tony and a few of my friends would be good friends with him. But he takes me for PTs. He would have trained him, I think, in boxing for a bit and stuff like that. And I can't say I know him personally, but I haven't heard a bad word about him. And then you have Sean Casey. I, I, I don't know. Who's that now? I think, is he he's maybe buying bridges somewhere? What does he do? He, he does a good, he's a big social media presence and he's over a million followers. He only eats raps and stuff. My and woman told me about him actually. So he like, so you've got Ampax, you've got Tony McAlevey, you've got Sean Casey, but you've only got one king and that's the art king. So guys, I want to finish off and thank Mark. No, thank from you. The bottom of my heart for I actually thought I was going to be nervous coming here and I was thinking, am I going to be able to talk all right? Am I going to get on like a dick here or anything? But, just from being in there it was all right, you know, just normal, a bit of crack. But it's, 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 and I mean this here, and, and, and what, there will be nobody in this show that I, that, that I don't inspire from, you know, and I was meant to have my arm mate on here. Um, he does a lot of raffles there, they call him the bear, but he was very, very busy. <laughs> he, couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't make it, so I had to just do with you. Well, thank you, Mark, lad. And well, I mean no it bother, from for coming here. And we'll go to the Tilly Lamp now and get a feed. And we're doing that, guys. Remember what you used to. Keep her alias. Abu. Ah,